An object is one meter in front of a diverging lens, which has, and it's important it's a diverging lens, which has a focal length of 45 centimeters. The object is 400 millimeters high. Using a scale of one centimeter represents 0, 0,2 meters. Draw a ray diagram to show the following image. The first thing that you have to do is you actually have to write out the scale. Even though I gave you that scale, you do need to say a scale. One centimeter represents 0, 0,2 meters. The next thing you need to do is you need to put your diverging lens in position and you need to decide using that scale what everything is. So one meter is five centimeters, 45 centimeters is 0, 0,045 meters, which means it is 2,25 centimeters and 400 millimeters turns out to be two centimeters. So we're going to measure out and we're going to say um, the focal length is 2,25 and then that's at 4,5 and that's at M, F, 2F and then beyond 2F over here, just a little bit out at 5 centimeters, you draw a 2 centimeter high line, you call that the object. You're then going to bring in a line until it meets that diverging lens and then as if it came from F, it diverges. Do not forget arrows. Then you go through M do not forget an arrow. And then your object, at least your image, is going to be upright and it is going to be over there and you label that I. You are then expected to find out the properties of that image. It is diminished, in other words, it is smaller. It is upright, in other words, it is not upside down. And because of the dotted line, it is virtual. What is the magnification? If you don't give me formulae, you can't expect marks. Magnification is either image height over object height or image distance over object distance. And I happened to use the height and I get 0, 0,6 when I measure that divided by my original 2 centimeters over there or I could have converted back using the scale. Either way, I land up with 0, 0,3 and it does not have a unit. If a diverging lens was used in spectacles to correct eyesight, would the person be wearing spectacles for long-sightedness or short-sightedness? Justify your answer by referring to the shape of the eyeball and you can use a diagram. So I'm going to start off by saying, here's my long eyeball. That, that is what would normally happen. In come the light rays and they meet before the retina. And I need to say something along the lines of, this person has a long eyeball and is short-sighted. And then I need to say, if I were then instead to put a diverging lens over there, what that would do is it would spread these rays a little bit. Sorry, that's not a particularly good... Let's try again over here. It would spread the rays a little bit and then bring them in so that they met over at the actual eye. Define the critical angle. This is a pure definition and book work. It is the angle of incidence, and you are getting better at it, thankfully. Angle, now that you don't have to do it anymore, angle of incidence that causes an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. Use the diagram below to measure the critical angle. So I need to say, what was the angle of incidence that caused an angle of refraction of 90 degrees? It was that angle over there. And when I measure it, it's 58 degrees. The next one is, where's, what is the angle of total internal reflection? Here is my angle of incidence, and that is my angle of reflection. And when I measure that, it is 67 degrees. Kristen tries to cross a river by swimming perpendicular to the bank with a velocity given. The river flows downstream, so there's two vectors in essence. One of them is going that way, 0, 0,5, and at the same time, one is going that way at 2 meters per second. Not very difficult, really. Kristen takes 10 minutes to cross the river. We've got her speed. We don't need to worry about the current speed. We're only interested how far did she swim. So distance, it's a constant velocity, so we're not interested in an equation of motion. We're simply going to say that distance is equal to velocity times time. 
So distance is equal to velocity times time. I've been given the velocity. What is the time? Um, 10 minutes, I need to get that into seconds. 10 times 60, and I land up with um, 300 meters. It's a distance, so it does not need a direction. Well, it's how far. It doesn't say that it's a vector. With the aid of a sketch diagram. So here's my sketch diagram. Complete the parallelogram. Calculate the resultant. The resultant is the diagonal. No problem. I can see that that's a Pythagoras story. R squared is equal to 0, 0,5 squared plus 2 squared. So R turns out to be equal to 2,06 meters. But if I am finding velocity, I need a direction as well. So I better choose an angle. And I'm going to choose this angle over here. And I'm going to call it theta. And then I'm going to say that tan of theta is equal to the opposite side, which is 0, 0,5, divided by 2. And my theta turns out to be 14,04 degrees. Now, relative to what? 14,04 degrees. I wasn't overly strict, but in future I will be. This is the bank. Okay, the current flows parallel to the bank of a river. Bank, bank. So this angle is 14,04 degrees from the bank. If you decided to go with the 65,96 or whatever many of you got, you then need to say that it is that angle relative to what she tried to swim. McKinley borrowed a car to take Nicola to the dockyard. When she arrived, she was traveling a bit too fast, so she slammed on the brakes and tried to stop before the car went over the edge and fell into the water. The car's mass is given, and it was moving at a speed, and the key is so long. What is the speed in kilometers per hour? 33 meters per one second is equal to 0, 0,03 three kilometers per 1,360th of an hour. So I multiply 0, 0,033 by 3,600 and I get 118,8 kilometers per hour. Determine the deceleration needed for McKinley to stop before going over the edge of the key. So we've got a distance. We have got an initial velocity, we're interested in an acceleration, and we need to stop. So final velocity is 0 meters per second. So an equation of motion, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. 0 is equal to 33 squared plus 2, I don't know, a, and I've got a 50 meter long key, and I land up with a being negative 10,89 meters per second squared and since I already said it was a deceleration, I don't have to really say very much more than that. But I could have said slowing down, decelerating, in the opposite direction to motion, any of those. This graph shows the changing velocity of an object over a 10 second period. The object starts moving east. So that's all east above the line. This will be west below the line. State the object's instantaneous velocity after 8 seconds. I come down at 8. I go across and I see that I hit at somewhere around negative 6 or negative 7 meters per second. It's just a reading off the graph. It's at that moment. Calculate the magnitude of the object's acceleration between A and C. That is, now please get your marks. You didn't give me much chance to give you marks here. Acceleration equals gradient. And if you make a mistake, I can give you a mark. If you just launch into the gradient, Change in V over change in time is equal to 15 minus minus 10, which is plus 10, divided by 0 minus 5. And then I rearrange that and I land up with a minus 5 meters per second squared. But it only wants the magnitude. So I don't care about the negative sign, and I don't give a direction. Calculate the object's total displacement between C and E. So displacement is, again, help me to give you marks. Displacement equals area under curve. And then I can say that is equal to the length times the breadth, which is going to be 2 
times by 10 plus, oopsie, sorry, plus, I'm now in a triangle, half of the base, 7 to 10 is 3, times by the height of that triangle, 10, and I land up with 35 meters. They want displacement. Displacement includes a direction. All of this happened in a westerly direction.